it has started. Multiple brigades of Ukrainians started their offensive, and even according to some Russian sources, they push across as many as five different front lines. The biggest concentration of Ukrainian attacks at this very moment is located at the south and the southeast of Ukraine, in the Zaporozhye region. But then they also push very actively in Bakhmut, advancing several more kilometers closer to this city and destroying Russian tanks along the way. But more about all of this in just a couple of minutes. What's up, investors? It's the Russian dude. And let's get straight to the point and talk about some ridiculous Russian propaganda. And so, in our first picture, we have Chiburashka, most likely the Soul Eater. So, this creature, which is supposed to be a funny cartoon for kids in Russia, he came to give some oranges to children. Hopefully, these are just regular oranges, but what do I know? But, I mean, the only sensible thing I can say right here is that probably Russian authorities doing something good since the beginning, they are training Russian kids to be resilient for shocking events since their childhood. But okay, next to some other Russian news, and so the Ministry of Internal Affairs proposed a law for those men who received the military summons to not give them driving licenses. And then one of the representatives of the Russian government, Andrei Kartapolov, who is, to be honest, behind so many mobilization laws and proposals, he said that <laughs> there is no need to be panic. Calm down, there is not going to be another mobilization. But okay, here is the perfect analogy for you. Imagine you are a student sitting in a class, and then your professor says, okay guys, take your pens, close your books, turn off your phones, and, I mean, you would obviously be prepared that right now you're gonna do a test or a quiz, right? And then, after saying all this, the professor says, don't worry, there is not going to be a quiz. And that is pretty much exactly what is happening right now inside Russia. They do all these mobilization-related events, and then they say that it's not going to happen. But okay, I just cannot get this image of Chiburashka out of my head. So guys, if you don't want him or her or it to come into your sleep, you need to write a comment Chiburashka, please do not come. And just to make sure, can you also please like this video and subscribe to my channel. The Russian dude protection is guaranteed. You can also follow me on Instagram, because today I'm going to Florida to see the Stanley Cup final game, and I'll make some stories. The link will be down below. Alright, and now let me give you a quick update on Kahovka Dam situation, some events in the south, and then we'll talk about the east and the rapidly increasing attacks of Ukrainians against Bakhmut while decimating Russian tanks. But first of all, right here is the video, allegedly somewhere from the southern front lines, where Ukrainians are trying to cross the river while being infiltrated by fish diversion group. The fish has been reportedly caught and successfully consumed. But jokes aside, now let's go to Kachovka Dam, and as you can see from this video, this is the current condition. And the water levels in Kachovka city reportedly started declining as much as 1.2 meters. Then we have several satellite images which show us the comparison before and after of flooding in Oleshki, Krimki and Karsunki. And without a doubt, one of the most severely affected cities is Oleshki. Reportedly 90% of this town is under the water and the water levels can reach up to 3 meters. And speaking about Kherson region in general, approximately 600 square kilometers of this region is under water, with the average water levels to be 5.6 meters, with the 32% affected being on the right side of Dnipro river and 68% on the left side. And just when you thought it couldn't get worse, whenever Ukrainian volunteers were helping civilians to evacuate these regions, Russians reportedly were launching attacks against the civilian objects. And just as always, way more photos and videos of Kachovka Dam incident will be available on my Patreon. There's still one week of reaccess and the link is down below. And so yes, what about the leaders of Russia and Ukraine? Well, according to Dmitry Peskov, Vladimir Putin is not planning to visit Kherson region. I mean, why would he go somewhere where everyone hates him on the territory of Ukraine? He will simply not be allowed there. 
But on the other hand, President Zelensky already made a visit to the affected regions in Kherson and he met with the regular civilian people. As we go a little bit more to the west to Kinborn Speed, which is still temporarily occupied by Russians, as a result of this flooding it became an island, temporarily. And then the water even started to reach already Mikolaev, with some places experiencing up to 1 meter of water levels. But what is absolutely mind-blowing is that in the city of Odessa, as you can see located across Black Sea, some pieces of furniture also started arriving to the beach lines. And then in Zaporozhye, hundreds of kilometers away, the water levels also started decreasing rapidly, with some beaches experiencing 10 meters of new land, which were previously underwater. As for now, it is estimated that 14,000 houses have been affected by this flooding and approximately 4.3 thousand people have been displaced. And according to the representative of the White House, Karine Jean-Pierre, she said that it was Russia responsible for the destruction of Kachovka Dam because it was under its control for the last year plus. But like mentioned previously, Russians are experiencing way worse and severe consequences of their own actions, with their first lines of defenses on the left side of Dnipro river being completely flooded, as you can see from this map. Which, to be honest, is crucial for the ongoing Ukrainian counteroffensive, and we will talk about this in a little bit more details very soon. But for now, let's briefly talk about the situation in the east of Ukraine, the rapid new success of Ukrainians in Bakhmut, and then we will come back to the south. But first of all, let's make a quick stop in once again Belgorod region, where the locals were able to hear some loud noises. Most likely, Russian air defense system was intercepting something in the sky. Then we have this video from Nova Tavaljanka, which shows us the members of Russian volunteer corps driving around the city, which just once again confirms their presence in this settlement. And then, as we move back to Ukraine, according to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, Russians attempted a limited offensive to the southwest of Kremina with absolutely no success, while both Russian and Ukrainian sources were reporting significant fighting around Bakhmut. Such as, for example, two tanks and several more armored vehicles of Russians have been completely destroyed in one previous night in Opetne, located to the south of Bakhmut. And then, according to some Ukrainian sources, Ukrainians were able to push Russians 1.2 kilometers deeper inside Bakhmut, reportedly putting them behind the canal already. Just imagine how quick Ukrainian counteroffensive in Bakhmut is happening in comparison to the Russian offensive, which happened more than half a year. And even the US officials, they confirm that Ukrainian counteroffensive, specifically in the East, is happening right now, though unfortunately there are losses. According to them, the Russian resistance is a little bit stronger than Ukrainians anticipated, but it does not prevent them from advancing inside Bakhmut. They even gave us some details that Ukrainians were able to push Russians around Bakhmut, closer to the eastern part of the city, where Russians are now occupying the pre-made lines of defenses, like something like trenches and other fortifications. And just overall, as you can see from this map, this is how much land Ukrainians were able to retake around Bakhmut as of last day. Just literally a couple more words from the east and then we'll talk about the south. And first of all, right here is the video from Luhansk, where you can see the industrial factory has been under attack. And then right here is the drone footage, also allegedly somewhere from the eastern front lines, where we can see a Ukrainian drone attacking a Russian armored personnel carrier with so many Russian soldiers riding it. Unfortunately, I'm not able to show the consequences, that is why the full version is on my Patreon, along with some other photos and videos. The link is down below. Next we go a little bit more to the south, to this settlement called Rivnopil, where reportedly a large Russian assault group has been destroyed with the Ukrainian artillery fire. And just overall, four control points, five ammunition warehouses, two air defense systems and one electronic warfare system of Russians have been destroyed by Ukrainians in the last 24 hours alone. But okay, and now as promised, let's talk about the situation in the south, because this is exactly the place where according 
according to even some Western medias, the counteroffensive of Ukrainians has already finally started, and their main concentration is on Zaporozhye region. For the last several days, Ukrainians have been assembling forces right to the north of the front lines in Zaporozhye region, and also they were engaging in mine-sweeping activities. Pretty much exactly the things you need to do before launching your counteroffensive. And first of all, according to Russian sources, Ukrainians started advancing across pretty much the entire Zaporozhye front line, starting all the way from Orikhiv all the way to Velika Novosilka. According to them, a lot of Ukrainian soldiers are advancing with the support of convoys of tanks and other military vehicles, which are also being supported from the back by the artillery fire. And right before it started, according to Russian collaborators in the region, Ukrainians potentially were even using HIMARS to probe the defenses of Russians to find the weak spots. And like mentioned previously, it is reported that Ukrainians are pushing all the way from Velika Novosilka to Orikhiv, with the most concentration being to this Malatok Machka and all the way down to the south. We even have the very first footage from Zaporozhye front lines, such as for example right here you can see a Russian heavy flamethrower called Sansepyok being destroyed. And then right here is the video of a Russian modern tank T-80 being destroyed in Novodarovka. And even some hostilities have been reported in Robotne, then in Tokmak some loud noises have been reported, and even as deep as in Berdyansk, as you can see from this video. And according to some Ukrainian military representatives, Ukrainians were able to advance as deep as 3 kilometers inside the Zaporozhye region, and they even give us this map, which shows the alleged, assumed advancement of Ukrainians into the Zaporozhye region. But obviously, <laughs> the Russian military commanders, they said that Ukrainian counteroffensive completely failed. They're able to destroy 350 Ukrainian soldiers and more than 30 tanks in, I would say, like, what, one hour or something like this. But wait, there is more. The Minister of Defense of Russia, specifically Sergei Shaigu, he went even further. He said in this night alone, Russians were able to eliminate 1,500 Ukrainians with more than 150 armored military vehicles. And obviously, according to him, Ukrainian attacks have been successfully repelled and Ukrainians gave up. But you know what is very interesting? Approximately one to two weeks ago, Evgeny Prigozhin, yes, the same guy, the leader of Wagner, he predicted that if the Ministry of Defense of Russia will be as sloppy as they usually are, Zaporozhye front lines will be crushed. And this is exactly what's about to happen right now. But, as for now, not much information is made public, because the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine previously asked for operational silence. That is why I will try to report on whatever information is available online to the general public, but maybe I will not be able to report on everything, maybe we will only see the consequences. And to be honest, I assume that these consequences will be pretty positive for Ukrainians, because in the past, you remember like for example Kharkiv for Kherson region, the liberation was extremely fast. And if you don't want to miss any of this, just please consider subscribing to my channel, it only takes one click. The best way to support my work is through my Patreon, you can also become my channel member or simply use the PayPal link. Everything can be found to the right and down below. Thank you so much for your attention, Tavarishi, and see you tomorrow.